Pastor Isaac Matendo pastors the African church that meets every Sunday in the upper room. And Pastor Isaac's going to come at this time and share about his trip. And also Murray Headley is going to come with him. And I feel left out because they both have matching. They're at the back. Come on up there, young, young fellows. They have matching shirts. Where's mine? <laughs> Let's give me a hand clap as they come to share today. Thank you so much for agreeing. I know you're tired, but I know you're ready. Which one's going first? My shirt's in the mail. Is this close enough, Jerry? Close enough? Uh, okay, first thing I'd like to do is I know you're all in a big uh, inquiry to who's who up here. So I know that we're dressed the same and we, we look identical, but this is Pastor Isaac and I'm Murray. So <laughs> get that out of the way. Okay, we'll get start with the first picture. Now, after a long, long flight, we did manage to touch down in Zambia, and that was a, a very welcome sight to see that. It's a, it's a tremendously long plane ride over there. Uh, next. Now, first thing uh, that the congregation did when we went to uh, Pastor Isaac's uh, uh, building site for the church was they pinned one of these VIP badges on me. And I never had one of these on me in my life, but, and it was, you know, it was just from that point on, at times it was almost embarrassing how they treated me. I'd, it was just unbelievable how they looked after me. Uh, and I just can't say enough for them. Uh, next. Now, I had to sneak this one in because everybody was wanting to know what kind of food we eat in, in uh, Africa. And as you can see, there's, there's uh, lots of fruits and potatoes and, and beef. And it was just excellent, excellent food, healthy food. And lots of it, right? Yeah. Okay, next. Yeah, now, I don't know if you can pick me out in this one or not. <laughs> But this is, the, uh, this is the pastors and the organizers of the assembly. Uh, we're we're kind of up on the stage there, and, and uh, each one of those usually do, does a speaking uh, session. And the one particular Sunday that we uh, started the assembly, Pastor Isaac said, this may go a little longer than your hour and a half or whatever you have at Brandon. Uh, we started at nine in the morning, we left at seven at night. And I said, yeah, that was a little longer. Different thing. And next. Okay, this is just, uh, this more or less shows the foundation of, of the new church that uh, they have got poured. And it's, it's, it doesn't really show the size of it there, but it's, it's going to be a huge building. A very nice. I saw the finished architectural drawing. It's going to be a beautiful building. So it's well underway. And we're just waiting for the finish of it. So, But it is well underway. Uh, next. <laughs> now this little guy here, he liked to dance. It didn't matter where you saw him or what was going on. He had to dance. So I got a picture of him dancing. And but you know what I noticed is, is was that the, the whole congregation were, uh, you know, upbeat and wanted to dance and wanted to uh, be be very very friendly and you know and I, I just thought for a minute you know what what the heck have they got that, that, that and then it, and about two seconds later I said I know what they got they got Jesus and they just uh, they just are a, a happy bunch next. This is a ladies' choir that was brought in. Uh, you can't really see the, the dresses and uniforms they have on, but they were very, very well dressed, and they had the most beautiful voices uh, when, they, when they were singing. It was just something to listen to. 
Next. Now, this is, this is the bishop from, from Kenya. He was brought in. He was the guest speaker uh, for the assembly. And him and I really bonded. And we had some very, very deep conversations. And he was just a tremendous speaker. And he's just a great man. Uh, next. Now, this was laid. This is, the, this is the cornerstone, the assembly stone that was laid while we were there. And it was painted while we were there. This is the, they had a dedication ceremony for the church. There were some dignitaries and... So that was kind of neat to see. Next. Now this is just, uh, I think these are just some children here that are getting uh, kind of instructions for their next show that they're going to put on. There was, uh, it was just continually, uh, you know, there would be speeches and then there would be singing and there'd be celebrations and it just, it just went on continually. It was, uh, Really awesome. Uh, next. Now, this is where my baptism took place. I got baptized when I was over in Africa. And standing up there, I was saying a prayer that I hope the water was warm. <laughs> and that prayer went unanswered. <laughs> because it was cold. But... We got it done, and I thank you, Pastor Isaac, for that event. It was, uh, it was uh, really uh, heart-moving. Uh, next, uh, here's my favorite one here. We get these, uh, these young kids. They just, uh, they, they would do anything, you know, to get in a picture, or they would uh, do anything. If you ask them to help do anything, they're, they're more than willing to do whatever. Uh, you know, and that, they're the future messengers of the, of the word. And uh, they're, they're just such well-behaved, sweet kids. Uh, next. Now, this, this little guy here, he had to, <laughs> he followed around. He wanted to be on every picture. It didn't matter where you were. And if you're here and he moved here, then he'd keep moving around until. So finally, I took a picture of him. And, and uh, but he was just a. He was a picture nut. Next. Now, that, I want to take this one because that gentleman in the middle there in the white sports coat, he was my driver uh, and my tour guide, and uh, he just took me everywhere. He picked me up every morning at my lodge, and he would take me over to the uh, church site, and he was explaining the life of Africa and how things were, were uh, you know, laid out and the poverty ends of it. And he was just a, a tremendous help. Next. Here I am back to the food. <laughs> Doesn't that make you look hungry? It was just, the food was just phenomenal and, and Pastor Isaac made sure you had to eat it. But next. Yeah, there's another one of the food here that just... Uh, it was just uh, delicious stuff. Okay, this is the this is the original uh, church that they still use now, waiting for the uh, new building to uh, get built. It's considerably considerably smaller, but it's adequate. It it's uh, you know set up with a stage and they have a band and but there's just there's just uh, so many people uh, wanting to come that it's, they, they need more room. Okay, next. Oh, I had to throw in a couple of animals here because we're in Africa. I believe this is a, what is that, an antelope? I, I, hmm? No? You're an African, you don't even know the animal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's an antelope of some kind. Okay, the next. And I know these are porcupines. I know that for sure. So I had no problem with them. But uh, look, next. Now I just wanted to show you how stressed out I got when we we're we we're on a river cruise uh, down one of the rivers in Africa, and it was just a 
the most relaxing, beautiful afternoon. Just really blessed. Oh, and there's the uh, termite, termite mounds that you see all over the place. They, some of those get quite high. The next. Now, these next two pictures are of Pastor Isaac's wife. Uh, she, was cooking, uh, she was cooking supper for us, so they cook outside rather than inside. And uh, yeah, there she is there. And she just explained a couple of minutes to me what, what they, why they did that. Um, I don't think I got it. Miss, why do they do that? Uh, because we do you use the charcoals, and they are that when we, they are cooking inside. Oh, the it, yeah. And uh, the smoke, it can harm some people if it is inside. Oh, that is why they do it outside. I don't know why they did it, but it was sure delicious food. It was great food. So that's a, that's, I know that was short, but that's about all I got together for the, uh, for the uh, pictures. But I would just like to say that I, I got to see uh, Pastor Isaac's dream of that church. And I got to see the hunger in, in, in the African people to, that are reaching out, uh, you know, to learn more of Jesus and, and carry the message. And it's, it's powerful. It's really powerful. And there's, it's, there's really a movement there on this church. And, uh, you know, I, I was, it was just a blessing that, that I got to go. And, and like I told Pastor Isaac, and God willing, I will be there again. Because now I'm hooked on it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, this trip was a very, very long because we used another way, I never used it. So it took more than 25 hours to reach Zambia. So it was very long, we were tired. But we thank God because of your prayers, we managed to go there. We left here in Brandon 21st of July and then uh, first of uh, August, we were there, and the seminar has already begun. And the third, as you saw in the picture, we were having the laying of the foundation with the former general superintendent of our denomination, Assemblies of God, in Zambia. Wednesday, the 7th, we, it was... Uh, we had a baptism at the youth, so we baptized the three people with the Brother Murray. And Sunday the 11th, it was very, very, very long and very tough because we come together at the church. That church uh, I left in Zambia, it has, we opened another branch and another church comes together after three, three months. So we were together there where we baptized again that Sunday, 16 people, and we dedicated 17 children to, to the Lord that same day, and we ordained some leaders to the work of God who will be helping with the others when I'm not around. Sunday, the 18th of August, we traveled to Kenya, and the bishop who was the guest speaker there, where again I was ministering for three services. It was also a long, long. That I was telling Murray that was longer than the one in Zambia because we started at 6 a.m. and we ended 7 p.m. from the church. So it was unusual because here, but we saw the, the grace of God. 
Sunday 25 of August, we were back in Zambia, and I was busy again doing some services. We had a couple meetings. We had a pledging for the building where we contributed 80,000, yeah, 4,800 US dollar for the, the work of God. Sorry, 7,650 US dollar for that work. And the Monday, we had, uh, I was preaching to the youth, uh, where Brother Murray, I, I didn't see the picture, you speaking to, to the youth there. He got a privilege to speak to youth in, in Zambia. And uh, Monday 12, I was uh, preaching again to the ladies and uh, to the men of that, uh, that, that church. It was a very, very heavy time to me this time because last year I didn't go, so I found many things waiting for me there to do. And we managed to do that also because of you people of Calvary and Pastor Gary to accept supporting us. May God bless you. Our church in Zambia was very, very glad, and they send their greetings and their thanksgiving for your support. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, that is how it was, Pastor Gary. Now, let me speak a little bit of the message because today it is a, a mission Sunday. Pastor Gary read the, the verse here he wanted to read because missions is the command and we do call it Great Commission. God commissioned, Jesus commissioned each and every one of us to go and preach the word of God. Missions, it is not about the pastor, it is not about the, um, the church leaders or the elders of the church, but it is to every believer who believes in the Lord Jesus. If you believe that Jesus is your savior and your Lord, so you are commissioned to go out and reach other people so that they can know Jesus. People out there, they are perishing, not only in Africa, even here. People want to know Jesus. They want to hear Jesus. They want to accept Jesus. Remember, Jesus was sent by God because God loves you. And he didn't only love you, he loves even those ones who are not yet saved. And who will reach them? God recommended, God commissioned you and me to go and reach those people so that they can know God, so that they can accept Jesus, so that they can know that God loves them. There is a singer who sang a song, I like he said, God loves people more than anything. And more than anything, Jesus wants to, Jesus wanted to die he said, I would rather die than let people go because God loves people. Because God loves you, because he loves, God loves those ones. He commissioned me, he is commissioning you to go out and reach those people who are perishing so that they can know him, so that they can enjoy what you are enjoying. God, Jesus will never come again here on earth to go and preach. Hallelujah. He will never do that again. He commissioned you and me to do that. Me to go and preach. Me to go and reach the unreachable people so that they can also receive Jesus as their own Savior. So that they can be forgiven. So that they can enjoy what we are enjoying. Amen. That is the reason you are commissioned. And uh, who is going to tell those people, I said, it is you and it is me. In the book of Romans chapter, Romans chapter 10, I'm going to read there, chapter 10 of Romans, verse uh, 13. 
The Bible tells me Romans chapter 10 verse 13 to 15. I read. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Amen. So people are there waiting to know Jesus because each and everyone who calls upon the name of Jesus, it doesn't matter which kind of problem you are going through. When you call upon the name of Jesus, you will be saved. I had an example in um, 1991 in Burundi. There were that um, uh, there were a war in Burundi, and I was in that country at that time. And uh, people they are killing each other themselves. They are killing each other. And now they in the area where it is only Muslims inside. And one of the Muslims was hiding himself under his, his, his roof, in between the, the goats. He was the farmer, he had the goats. And then he was about to be killed. But he said, I heard people saying, if someone can call about, upon the name of Jesus, he can be saved. And then where he was hiding himself under there, he kneeled down and then he called upon Jesus. And people were looking for him. So in one way or another, Jesus covered him by his blood and they couldn't kill him. When he came out there, he got, he got, um, he accepted Jesus as his Lord and his Savior. And he was giving that testimony, how he called the name of Jesus and how he received that, um, how he was saved from being killed. So people are waiting there outside to call upon Jesus. But how can they call upon Jesus and they never hear about him? There should be people who will go outside there and tell those people about Jesus that if you call upon Jesus, you will be saved. It doesn't matter what problem you are passing through. It doesn't matter what kind of situation you are in. Just call upon his name. You will be saved. Amen? And for you to call upon his name, you should believe in that person or that Jesus. Now, for them to believe in him, some people should be there to tell them that Jesus is able to save you, is able to forgive you, is able to pardon your sins. It doesn't matter how big and how bad they are. As we read in the book of Isaiah 1, 18, he says, come, let us reason it together. doesn't matter how bad your sins are. I am ready to forgive you and to make you as clean as snow. Hallelujah. So people should be there to preach. That is how you and me comes in to go there. Each and everyone in this congregation, I, I like the way you are supporting. We have this, and Pastor Gary read, and I saw in the screen here, those people you are supporting. That mom goes, last year, you went to Syria. She goes to Syria. There is another lady here who goes to Nigeria, to, to Kenya, and another one to, to Zambia, and, no, sorry, to Zambia, to Uganda. They are sent. They are willing. They are ready to go. But if you are not ready to go because of one reason or another, but you still have an opportunity to serve God. If you are not ready because of the physical or, or another problem, but you still have the needs to kneel down and pray for the missions. Hallelujah. It, 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 it doesn't mean only going. We need people who will go outside there, and we need people who will support financially, and we need people who will pray. Each and everyone must be involved in the missions. 
And when we are doing that, we are fulfilling the great mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is our prayer, and this is uh, the prayer of this church that he has been doing, and this is what Pastor Gary has been emphasizing on, to go out and reach people so that we can fulfill our God's commission. It is our duty, it is my duty to preach and to let people know about God. May God bless you as we all fulfill this great calling to, the, to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor Gary. Thank you. We're ready to go nine hours if you're ready. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I know that's life-changing. For Murray Headley to go is life-changing, I know, to see what God is doing in other parts of the world. And for Pastor Isaac, too, thank you for your willingness to go and to serve God. And I believe you took your vacation and went over there to minister for the Lord. And lots of fruit left behind, lots of seeds sown. And, and I want each one of you to know that you had a part to play in that, praying for him, we're praying for him, and also as you give to the missions budget month by month, you have a part to play in that. You can say, hey, I've, I have a hand in that because I've been a part of that. So continue to let God move by his spirit in your life and just continue to open up your heart to the Lord and say, God, how can I be used um, locally? There's many, many opportunities we give you to share the good news of Jesus because as you're sharing the good news of the gospel, there's a fire that gets ignited within you. As you give out, God puts in. And you want a bigger flame? Give out more. Talk more about Jesus. Be involved in ministry. And, and God will put a bigger, bigger flame in your heart and a bigger, bigger smile on your face. Let's stand together. And as we close in prayer this morning, if you would like to receive ministry, you want someone to pray for you, then we invite you just to come to the front. And that way you'll identify yourself. And we'd be glad to minister to you, whatever your need might be. Let's sing a song and then we'll close in prayer.